An airplane propeller. An airplane propeller is 2.08 meters in length from tip to tip and has a mass of 117 kilograms. When the airplane's engine is first started, it applies a constant torque of 1950 newton meters to the propeller, which starts from rest. Part A. What is the angular acceleration of the propeller? Model the propeller as a slender rod whose moment of inertia is 112 1 over 12 ml squared. Part B. What is the propeller's angular speed after making five revolutions? Part C. How much work is done by the engine during the first five revolutions? Part D. What is the average power output of the engine during the first five revolutions? Part E. What is the instantaneous power output of the motor at the instant that the propeller has turned through five revolutions? Okay. So let's note that we have a length of 2.08 meters. Uh, the mass of the propeller is 117 kilograms. The torque is constant 1950 newton meters. We start from rest and the moment of inertia for rotations about the central axis is 1 over 12 capital M capital L squared. Okay, so let's start with part A. Part A was asking us the angular acceleration of the propeller. Now using Newton's second law rotational form, the net torque is equal to moment of inertia times alpha, uh, where the rotations are about the center of mass. So alpha, the angular acceleration, will be tau, uh, the torque, divided by 1 over 12, capital M, capital L, squared, which is the moment of inertia. So this will give us 12 tau, divided by ml squared and that is 12 times 1950 divided by 117 times 2.08 squared and the answer is 46.2 radians per second squared. So we calculated the angular acceleration of the propeller in part A. In part B, what is the propeller's angular speed after making five revolutions? So, okay, in part B, we have angular speed since we start from rest, the angular speed as a function of time is equal to alpha times t, which is equal to the rate of change of angular position, d theta dt. So when we have five revolutions completed, that means we have an angular displacement delta theta that is 5 times 2 pi, which is 10 pi. 10 pi radians. So this delta theta that we will have in this time interval from t equals 0 to t final omega dt integral will give us 1 over 2 alpha t final squared. Why? Because it's alpha t. Alpha t integral gives us 1 over 2 alpha t squared evaluated between 0 and t final. This must be equal to 10 pi, so we find that the time it takes to complete 5 revolutions will be 20 pi divided by alpha square root. Okay, so omega final is then alpha times t final, which is 
alpha times 20 pi over alpha square root which is square root of 20 pi alpha so this alpha goes into the root as alpha square alpha square over alpha becomes alpha inside the square root and this has a numerical value of 53.9 53.9 radians per second when we substitute for alpha our result in part a so that's our final angular speed after making five revolutions part c is asking how much work is done by the engine during these uh, five revolutions the initial kinetic energy was zero we start from rest the final kinetic energy is the rotational kinetic energy one half i center of mass omega final square so this will be 1 over 2 i center of mass 1 over 12 ml squared times 20 pi alpha it, omega final was square root 20 pi alpha so this gives us um, you can see that uh, this 2 will make this 2010 and then we can have 10 becoming 5 making this 6 uh, so we have 1 over 6 times 5 pi alpha ml squared so this becomes uh, 5 pi over 6 alpha was 12 tau over ml squared so you can see here alpha was 12 tau over ml squared so we multiply this by 12 tau over ml squared and then after alpha we have another ml squared ml squareds will uh, cancel and the six This was uh, 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6 alpha here. Uh, so we will have 12 becoming 2 when we get rid of this uh, 6. So 12 becomes 2. And uh, therefore we have 10 pi tau as the final kinetic energy. So this is equal to 10 pi tau which is 10 pi times 1950, 61.2 kilojoules. That's our final kinetic energy. So that's the energy that we gain in these five revolutions, which will be equal to the work done by the engine. What is the average power output of the engine during the first five revolutions? For the average power output, we have torque times average angular speed. Now the angular speed as a function of time was given as alpha t. So the average value of omega will be equal to omega final divided by 2. Why? Because we have a linear increase in time. So this will be 1 over 2 square root 20 pi alpha, which will give us square root 5 pi alpha because the 2 will enter the square root as 4 and make 25. So we can calculate the average uh, power 1950 newton meters was our torque.
the average angular speed is square root 5 pi alpha and when we substitute for alpha uh, the result that we found in part a this is going to be 52.5 kilowatts and part e is asking the instantaneous power at uh, this final time so that will be torque times omega final which is um, 2 tau omega average because omega average is uh, omega final over 2 so we just multiply the answer in part d by 2 this becomes 105 kilowatts okay so we have an airplane propeller, which is basically a slender rod with moment of inertia 1 over 12 ml squared. It has a length L 2.08 meters, mass capital M 117 kilograms. It, it applies a constant torque 1950 newton meters and starts the engine from rest. So the angular acceleration of the propeller is torque equals I alpha, Newton's second law rotational form, gives us, uh, when we substitute for torque, our constant value and for moment of inertia, 1 over 12 ml squared, and M and L are known, 46.2 radians per second squared. The propeller's angle speed angular speed after making five revolutions while well, angular speed as a function of time is initial value which is zero plus alpha t so it's alpha t which is d theta dt and delta theta should be equal to 10 pi for five revolutions so the total angular displacement from zero to t final integral omega dt is one over two alpha t final square and t final is square root 20 pi over alpha and omega final is alpha times t final so that's square root 20 pi alpha which is 53.9 radians per second how much work is done by the engine during the first five revolutions that is equal to the net increase in the kinetic energy so the work done <clears throat> by the net torque will be equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the system uh, work kinetic energy theorem <clears throat> also applies here so we have one half i center of mass omega final square final kinetic energy initial kinetic energy was zero joules <clears throat> when we substitute our result for omega final from part b we obtain 61.2 kilojoules what is the average output power it is tau times omega average for a constant torque situation and omega average is simply omega final over 2 because omega increases linearly with time and the instantaneous power is tau, uh, tau times omega final which is twice the result we have obtained in part 